if the best rulers are those who have understood the intricacies of dharma. So it's all the more so that in that profession also one needs to become spiritual. If you have a spiritual ruler like uh, Janata, the great king of Videha, how wonderful the country would be. To be desired but not yet found, but whatever. So, we are saying, I am saying that whatever be your profession, whatever be your job, whatever be your external life, there are ways and means by which one can move towards the journey called the spiritual journey. In fact, you cannot escape from karma. Even if you don't want to, it will fall on your head. So finding no escape, we have to find ways and means how to stay within and not And it is possible to do so. We are saying it is not even possible to do so. How? First, the practice of spirituality is called yoga. Now when I say yoga, please don't misunderstand me. I am not talking only about the postures called yoga science. The science of yoga. Now what is the definition of the science of yoga? Yoga is chitta vritti yoga. Definition of the practice of yoga is yoga is chitta vritti yoga. That means the way by which the distracting waves of thought of the mind, the vrittis of the chitta, the mind stuff, can be stopped, controlled and made to cease. Chitta vritti nirodha. This is yoga. Actually, according to yoga philosophy, you need not even have a belief in God to practice. Yoga is chitta vritti nirodha. The definition of yoga is that the mind is made tranquil without distracting thoughts. So now for that, you can't simply in whatever way you live, sit and practice yoga. This is not going to work. Because you sit down and you will be distracted by various thoughts and movements. Because our way of life is not suited to the practice of yoga. So how do we do it? While you lead your life, whatever be your profession, whatever you are doing, make sure that you practice certain yamas and niyamas. And what are these yamas and niyamas? Basically, it means to start with at least moderation. Moderation in eating and drinking. Moderation in entertainment, <coughs> moderation in the exercise, moderation in sleep. Which means, as Krishna says in the Gita, this yoga which I am teaching is not for him who eats too much, or eats too little, or sleeps too much, or sleeps too little. This defines yama niyama, the rules and regulations. You know what happens if you eat too much. Eating too much and sleeping too much are interlinked. After all the hospitality, now instead of talking, I feel like sleep. Naturally. So, control your diet. One beautiful principle in this is when you sit down to eat, get up while you are still a little hungry. easily possible, it's not so difficult. And one uh, practical help in this may be that avoid pickles, because you know, pickles are designed to ignite your taste buds so that you eat more. Therefore yogis say, ah, let's avoid pickles. Not because there is anything wrong with pickles. So, Moderation in diet. If you are moderate in diet, now moderation in diet has gone to the other extreme. You see young people walking around, 
you are worried that if the wind blows very hard, they might fly off. This is not what it meant. Dieting means to have food that can be, that is nourishing, and enough for your body to function, and not starve yourself. Too little food is also not good. You know what happens when you starve? First day, second day, third day. Third day, if you don't eat, you cannot even think. And the brain stops functioning, slows down. So, moderation in diet, one of the rules. And moderation in sleep. And this is very important. Because many people think they are meditating when they are actually sleeping. I have seen this happen. You sit down, meditate, oh, then after sleep. Haven't you seen this happen? Now, if the teacher is also sleeping, then it is difficult, but generally not. The disciples who sleep. If the teacher also sleeps, then a reason may be invented for that, saying that it is a good way to me. A yogi who is meditating and who is in deep awareness and in samadhi, you will see that his body is always steady. It doesn't sway or fall because the balance is maintained. And you should bow down, that is a different. Going down is not falling asleep when you are meditating. Right? These are two distinct things. So, therefore, for beginners, get sufficient sleep at night. So that when you sit down to meditate in the morning, I come to that subject, you don't need really sleep. So, this midnight meditation is not meant for everyone. Why? Because what will happen is then in the daytime you will sleep. And in the night time, your whole sight, sleep cycle will get disturbed. So at least in the beginning, get sufficient sleep, sufficient food, not too much, sleep enough. So that when you get up in the morning, you are alert and ready to bed. Okay. The other you rules and regulation is try to simplify life, don't make it too complicated. Because if it is too complicated, how can you meditate? Your mind is moving around all the time. <coughs> you have to be able to keep your mind in a, moving in a certain direction instead of being pitted around. So, and Avoid any food that will make you sluggish so that when you sit down to meditate, your mind is cut out. Okay. Now why meditate at all? Okay, so I have done all this. Why should I meditate? Because precisely only you are interested in spiritual progress. Now suppose you are not interested in finding the truth or finding the Atman you can still meditate because it will help you to calm down your mind at least for the time. Most of the problems are because we are meditating. Now, another rule of Yama is Ahimsa. Now, when you say Ahimsa, people usually interpret it as killing animals or killing human beings. That is part of I. I'm part of himsa, not to kill, not to cause harm to others. But the basic element of himsa or violence starts from our mind, which is always in conflict. The beginning of violence is in our own mind, which is constantly in conflict. I like to be this, but I am like this. I want to do this, but I am not able to do it. I don't like certain parts of my character, but I cannot change it. So in one mind, there are so many conflicting thoughts and pressures which pull you in different directions. That creates conflict. 
that conflict itself is the root of violence, himsa. And when we move in the world, that himsa is reflected in our interaction with the outer world. Just look at it. Simple example. One day you find that your boss is in a very good mood, talking to you simply out of now, very useless. We keep this little good. One day you find in the morning he is in a terribly agitated mood. You have done nothing to agitate. Problem is at home he might have had a fight with his wife. Now, this is an example, maybe the other way around also. Now, that means the violence or the conflict and the, and the contradictions in his own mind reflect and manifest outside as anger. And in that anger, sometimes raised to great heights, it gets in violence. So we have to tackle that in us first then we can put an end to it. This is the meaning, the meaning of Ahimsa. Okay. <coughs> Having said this, so as you lead your lives, keep an eye on this. Moderation in everything, as far as possible. Okay. Then, if you seriously want to go within and be at peace with yourself, and have a tranquil mind. You must fix certain timings and certain practices which you have to do at fixed times. In a later stage, a yogi may be in complete peace and tranquility in the midst of all different situations. But in the beginning, it is not possible. You have to fix your priorities and say, such and such a time, I will sit down and do my meditation. While early morning is the best time to start, but for many people early morning differs. Early morning is when you wake up. So different people have different meanings for early morning. But I mean by early morning is when the world has still not stirred itself. And the birds are still singing, and the sun is just rising, and the VMTC is still not out, started operating too many buses, and so on and so forth. And also, at that time when you wake up, the mind is fresh. Why is the mind fresh? Because it has gone into deep sleep and come back. What happens in deep sleep? Shukti. You are not aware of your existence. You don't know who you are. And therefore you have no problems. So only when we know who we are that all our problems start. I am so and so, so that fellow didn't pay any attention to me, so I am agitated. He didn't do anything to me, but he ignored me, so I am agitated. Why? He doesn't he know who I am. He didn't even as much as lift his hand. But in deep sleep, who cares if somebody is lifting his hand or going away? Because you don't know that you exist. <coughs> you finish. This is called deep sleep. So when you wake up from that, the mind is rejuvenated because it is at complete rest. Why is it at complete rest? Because it doesn't know that it exists even. Therefore, the agitations of the mind do not exist. So that flesh when the mind wakes up, it's just still enjoying the leftover feeling of that deep sleep of rest. That is the time when it has to be caught. So that is the time when you should decide, this I will sit for six, at least for 15 minutes and do something. Something internal, because the whole day I am going to do everything external. There is something in my mind, within my mind, internally that I should prepare the base so that my whole day will be fine. Forget about finding the Atman, but you can't worry about it. The moment. 